Welcome to this lecture on working with a table of contents in iBooks Author. Now, since our last chapter, I've gone ahead and imported a number of other documents and images into our iBooks Author project. And I would encourage you to do the same thing to get some practice. All of the files that you're going to need are located in the text folder of the exercise files. So I would suggest that you do that. But uh, if you don't want to, certainly we can uh, uh, move forward. Um, now, in our lecture today, we're going to talk about the table of contents. And I mentioned how when you're creating your book, iBooks Author will automatically generate a table of contents for you. And this table of contents is updated automatically. So if you're moving sections around or chapters around, iBooks Author will take care of all the changes for you. Now, what we'll do is take a quick look at the table of contents as it stands right now. We've got four chapters in our book and multiple sections. So let's see what iBooks Author has created for us. So I'll just select uh, the table of contents and you'll notice that um, it creates this really nice looking table of contents uh, for me uh, and this will vary depending on the template that you're that you're using but in my case I've got my chapter one it lists all the subsections or the sections within that chapter down along the bottom I have um, some bullets that I can use to navigate between the different chapters and this uh, sort of gray area with some opacity this is where all the thumbnails for my pages are going to appear. So again, if I select another bullet, it'll show me chapter two, chapter three, and so forth. Now, if you want to actually preview what this is going to look like in the finished product, uh, at this point, we can just hit the preview button very quickly. We'll preview this. And I just, I'll just get a warning. We'll go into this in a bit more detail, but uh, on your Mac, when you're previewing, you can only really see the output in landscape orientation. So it's going to prepare the preview for us. It's actually publishing the whole book, and then um, it's going to open up the book using iBooks, uh, the app on my Mac. Okay, so we've got our book here. Okay, and uh, here's the video that we selected. I'll just go ahead and click OK. And now you can see the table of contents. So again, along the bottom, it shows you all the different pages. It also gives us a nice little thumbnail so we can easily scrub through this uh, book and see what, uh, what else we have. And I can click on any of these thumbnails and expand that out. So it's a really nice experience for browsing through uh, a book. We'll just go ahead and close that down for now and get back to our table of contents. Now the table of contents includes some default styles that you can go and, uh, and replace. We're going to cover this more when we talk about changing styles uh, when you're customizing a template, but the same rules would apply here. We're going to go through this in more detail around updating styles, um, but in the meantime what I want to show you is if you select the inspector panel, there is a table of contents panel available through the document inspector. And the document inspector is this little book icon on the left hand side. And um, what you can see is uh, I have some general metadata that I can include as part of this document. I would suggest that you include, you, know, you fill this out for your book. And then you can look at uh, the table of contents panel. Um, and this will allow you to add additional uh, content to your table of contents that's automatically generated. So right now, what um, iBooks Author will do is if you have a section marked copyright, it's going to include that in the actual table of contents. If you perhaps don't want to include it in the table of contents, you just want it to be part of the book but not show up in the table of contents, you can select that item and uh, click on this minus icon, which will remove that section from the table of contents. So if I do that, it gets rid of it. If I want to add it, any additional paragraph styles that should be added to the table of contents, so for example, if you have a, a document where you're using heading three for a, a section or for something that you want added to the table of contents, so people can you know, tap on that item and go directly to that um, part of your book, then you could select, uh, you could include heading three. 
or maybe you don't want to include all of these headings, you can also uh, delete those. If you want to add any additional styles, maybe you've done some custom style work, you can go ahead and add those paragraph styles to your table of contents. And this list is the list of styles that are currently used in this template. The same thing for adding a section. You can see that the only thing that we've got here is copyright. All the other sections are already included in the table of contents. So that's how you would select what actually gets into the table of contents. Now in terms of what the table of contents looks like, uh, part of that depends on formatting the styles associated with the table of contents. We'll get into that a little bit later on. Um, but then also just remember that any element that you change in one part of um, your table of contents, uh, that element will update in all the other chapters as well. So I'll show you an example of what I mean. If I select this background image, for example, you can see that I have some selection handles that I can use to uh, resize this, uh, this image. If I maybe resize this down a little bit, and right now it's just resizing it um, according to the uh, proportions, we'll look at how we can override that. But now if I go to chapter two, for example, you'll see that that, that that image that was being used for the table of contents is already resized. The same thing for chapter three. So keep in mind that um, if you're you know, modifying any section or element from the table of contents, it's going to affect all the other sections as well. So if we were to um, you know, delete, uh, let's say you know, the fact that it says chapter one, maybe we don't want to include that in our um, final table of contents. If we were to delete this text called chapter one, it would remove chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. Okay. Now the other thing that you should keep in mind is that the, uh, the table of contents will appear differently when uh, a reader is viewing your book in landscape mode versus portrait orientation. So in landscape orientation, each chapter has its own content page like what we're seeing here, it has its own navigation buttons and thumbnails along the bottom. In portrait orientation, the entire table of contents is visible as an expandable list. So it looks a little bit differently. It's still graphically very nice, uses the elements that you've inserted into those chapters and sections, but yeah, it, is, uh, it is a little bit different. Okay, so keep that in mind. In my case, I want to undo the changes that I've already done. So I'm just going to undo and uh, get back to uh, the default template layout. Okay, so the last thing I wanna just show you here is um, removing the page number. So it's possible that you may or may not want uh, page numbers included here. And that's just an option that you can select or deselect at the bottom of the document inspector. So if we just remove that, you can see that the page numbers disappear. Uh, but it's kind of nice to have page numbers, so I'll just include them. Okay, 